when there's words coming out of your mouth, could you just like not? <laughs> Today I'm here with my July wrap up part two for 2019. The first part was the first eight books that I read. Part two is the next seven that I read for a total of 15 books this month. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I have is actually a graphic novel, one of my favorite series ever. It is The Adventure Zone by Clint Griffin, Justin and Travis McElroy, and art by Carrie Pitish. Pitish, I can't say her name. But this is the second installment of The Adventure Zone. This is The Murder on Rockport Limited. So this series is based off of a Dungeon and Dragons podcast that the three Big Elroy brothers and their dad run. And basically it follows Taco or Taco, not 100% sure what their actual name is, but I call them Taco. He is an elf wizard. This is Meryl the Dwarf Cleric and Magnus who is a human warrior. They are three very unlikely heroes. In this installment they board a train called the Rockport Limited where they meet a boy detective who is trying to solve a murder and they are also looking for a magical artifact before it falls into the wrong hands. And I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. I absolutely loved the first installment of this and this one was no surprise. I knew I was going to love this as as well. I love to seeing the three good boys again. I just find them so lovable and quirky. I laugh out loud every time I read these comics. I also really liked the new characters that were introduced. I loved Angus the boy detective. I think he was a great addition to the story and I'm really hoping that we get to see more of him in future installments. I just found him to be hilarious. I'm still a huge fan of like the bright colorful panels. I'm just so excited for the third installment whenever it comes out you know your girl is gonna get her hands on it ASAP. The next book that I picked up was The Bells by Danielle Clayton and I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is another one that I did not expect to like as much as I did but I was pleasantly surprised. This follows Camelia Beauregard who is a bell which means that she has the ability to control beauty. Beauty is the most sought out commodity of New Orleans. After displaying her skills to the queen, Amelia is enlisted by the queen to help save the princess. The princess has been asleep for a very long time due to the sleeping sickness. So Camelia must decide very quickly whether or not she is going to help the ailing queen and use her bell powers in ways that she never knew she was able to. I was pulled into the story right from page one. I was so invested in the bells and what they stood for and the magic behind them. In the beginning, I was a little bit confused about what the bells were actually able to do with their strange powers, but as the story progressed, it definitely became a lot more clear to me. I loved every single character in this book. The bells were just absolutely fascinating to me. I do wish that we saw a little bit more of the other bells other than just Camellia. I think that the villain was one of my favorite villains that I've ever read. She was just so vile and I just felt like I needed to keep reading because I wanted to see what she was going to do next. I just found her to be so unpredictable. I am definitely looking forward to the second book in the series. I need it in my hands because I need to know what the heck's going on because that cliffhanger at the end who had me reeling. The next book that I have is Salt to the Sea by Rudis the Petties, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This occurs during World War II when the Willem Gustav, which is a ship that was meant to take thousands of people to freedom and safety, sunk. This story follows four different people with very different backstories who boarded this ship in search of safety, and it's basically their story. I liked how short the chapters were. It definitely kept my interest because I have like the attention span of a goldfish and I can't focus on very long chapters. So each of these chapters were like one, two, maybe five pages. I also really enjoyed how each character had a different backstory and reasons why they were seeking this ship. I also really enjoyed how each character had secrets that were slowly revealed throughout the chapters. I was very invested in every single character. Alfred was my least favorite character. He made my skin crawl and I was not a fan. I really liked Amelia and Johanna. I thought they were really great characters. I didn't like Florian at the beginning of the book but he definitely grew on me as the story progressed. I wish that I liked this more than I did but ultimately I wasn't blown away with it which is why I'm giving it 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is another one that I'm giving 3.5 out of 5 stars. It is In the Key of Nirogani and this 
by Natasha Dean. This is an own voices story. It follows Mira who immigrates with her family to Canada. She's always dreamed of becoming a musician but her very strict parents aren't for that. They want her to become a surgeon or a doctor instead. Only two people who support her dream of joining the school's jazz band is her grandmother and her best friend, Emily. Her crush, Noah, starts paying more attention to her ultra-competitive cousin, Farah, and then her arch enemy, Mackenzie, is also taking an interest in her best friend, Emily, who is starting to pull away from her. And because of all of this, Mira starts to become very defensive. And it's basically the story of her trying to come to terms with her changing life. I really liked how this was a story about how Nira was learning to love herself and become more confident in her relationships and everything going on around her, but I must say that the family relationships were definitely my favorite part of this story. It was really cool to see the emotional ties that everybody had to one another. Nira's grandmother was definitely my favorite character of the book. I loved seeing how supportive she was to Nira. She was just such a strong and loving character who was definitely a force to be reckoned with. I I think Nira was a very interesting character to follow. I loved watching her grow as the story progressed and I think that she was a very relatable character. But yeah, overall 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was enjoyable but nothing super over the top blow me away. The next book that I have is The Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foody and I'm not going to say too much about this because I'm actually planning on doing a full review for this book but I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Serena who is the Princess of Gamora which is a traveling circus and she is the star of the freak show and in this freak show she features her family who are actually illusions that she created which means that they're not really real except one night one of her illusions is killed and this starts a a big investigation to try to figure out how this is possible and who could have done this. I loved this book. Every character was just so lovable to me and I was so invested in this story but like I said not going to give a lot of talk about this right now because I'm going to have a full review so definitely check that out once it's released. The next book that I have is another 3.5 stars and it is Your Life is Mine by Nathan Ripley. This book follows Blanche Porter who has been avoiding her past since her father Chuck Varner, the notorious cult leader, went into a mall one day and shot various people before turning the gun on himself. Years later she is a very successful film director and she is told that her mother has been murdered. She is convinced that the police are not telling her everything that went on and that the cult is back and so she returns to her hometown to try to figure out how to stop it. I was very intrigued by the concept of this book. I am strangely fascinated by cults and the things that go behind them. Although nothing was inherently wrong about this book, I wasn't blown away by it either. The principles behind the cult were very fascinating to me. I was interested to see where the chaos was going to unfold, but honestly it was very underwhelming. It started off a bit slow, but as the story progressed I became more invested in Blanche and her past and where the cult was heading. I think that my favorite part of the book were the true crime excerpts from a book that was written about Blanche and her father and her past that was kind of interspersed inside the book. I thought that that gave a good backstory for the cult and what actually went on during that time. I think that it was a great addition to the story. Like I said, I wasn't overly blown away by this so I'm giving it a 3.5. And then the final book that I read this month is Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy and I'm giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Ramona Blue who has always been certain of Three things in her life. One, she likes girls. Two, she is fiercely loyal to her family. And three, she really wants to get out of her little town, but she's not sure if this is ever going to be possible. So when her sister Hattie becomes pregnant unexpectedly, she quickly realizes that she'll probably not be leaving anytime soon. When her childhood best friend Freddie turns up back in town, she is very excited and that's when she starts to develop some feelings for Freddie and she's very confused because she's always thought that she only likes girls and this is basically basically the story of her new self-discovery. I loved the characters in this book, not just Ramona, literally every single character. I was so invested in all of them and their friendships and their stories. Everybody was very unique and had their own personalities, which I really love. The diversity of this book is great. Every single character is described when they are introduced and it's not just the people of color, it's literally Ramona too who describes herself as being white, which I thought was really well done and I think more books need to do that. I also really enjoyed that things like class privilege and teenage pregnancy and financial difficulties were all discussed in a very respectful manner as well. I think that a lot of YA books don't 
do that and I think that a lot of people will find themselves in these problems. I loved the family dynamics in this book. Ramona is just so fiercely loyal to her family. I loved Ramona. I think that she was unapologetically herself and I really liked how the overall message of the book was that sexuality is fluid and it can change later in life and you shouldn't be ashamed of that. I just found her experiences very relatable. I just really liked how it was presented in this book and I was also a huge fan of the friendship to lovers trope. I'm a sucker for that so I was definitely shipping Ramona and Freddie the entire time. Alright guys, so that was my wrap up part two if you're interested in the first eight books that I read this month check out part one let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them and I'll see you all in my next video goodbye